Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to talk about a very recent and uh, very interesting evolution in the data engineering ecosystem. Um, and that was the acquisition of both DBT Labs and SQL Mesh by Fivetran. So two of basically, you know, the tools, DBT especially, had become the standard for managing those kind of ELT motions where, hey, I want to do my transformations within a database. I need a single interoperable whatever database I'm using. You know, you can use DBT on it. You just change out the connector type. Uh, it made it really easy to build really complex, uh, you know, scheduled SQL transformations as part of a pipeline, have them run on a schedule. Um, and so a lot of large organizations were doing that. And then SQL Mesh came around as kind of a competitor to that, uh, be more of an enterprise uh, features built in uh, to the open source platform, whereas DBT took kind of an alternate path. They really started trying to focus on building out their cloud product and adding a lot of features and functionality there while regular open source DBT just kind of plotted along there, kept moving, um, but wasn't receiving really a ton of love. Um, and now, you know, we had a about early, I think in mid, mid or early September, maybe late August, SQL Mesh was acquired by Fivetran and, you know, it was kind of an obvious fit, right? You know, hey, Fivetran wants to compete with DBT. Um, you know, they want to have an option for, hey, doing those kind of structured SQL transformations. And it makes a lot of sense for Fivetran because, you know, they are providing a really easy way to bring data from, hey, a lot of different sources with a GUI type experience, right? Um, and now they really have a monopoly on kind of the you know the more low code uh, data transformation uh, ecosystem. Um, so you know obviously there, there's Airbyte that's out there, um, um, and then Airflow is more hey for people that are on more towards the code side of the ecosystem. Um, but for people that hey I don't want to have a touch of UI, I don't want to ever have to or look at code or ever write my own code. I want this all to just be through drop down menus. Now, Fivetran has really, you know, kind of extended, hey, we're not just going to do APIs and connectors, we're actually going to do that for SQL transformations as well. Um, so, what does this mean for the data engineer? Um, well, Fivetran has already been increasing their prices um, a lot for their tool, right, because they realize, hey, we have this kind of monopoly where now, you know, and you know, they try to explain, away, hey, this isn't actually going to uh, cause an issue, but really, users that are using a lot of different connections, which is a lot of the case for five training, hey, you want to connect to all these different tools and not have to build, you know, point to point connections yourself, um, you're going to see increased prices unless you just have like one or two, you know, really, really heavyweight uh, connections, right? And that's what they've called out here. And if you go on Reddit and you go on, you know, any kind of social media, you'll see that people are complaining because obviously this is just massively jacked up their contracts without really any change at the user level. Um, and this, you know, is where they will probably take dbt right is now that you have hey dbt fusion they're you know said hey we're not going to support an open source version anymore we're just going to focus on this new uh you know explicitly licensed dbt fusion model for distributing dbt uh, my my guess is that they you know make that more expensive and you know also integrate it with the five train ecosystem so you get some benefits of it of that integration but really now, Fivetran own, you know, they took out the competitor to DBT that might have driven down prices, which was SQL Mesh. Um, and so now if you want that type of experience, you, you're going to need to go to Fivetran. Um, so the reason why I made this video was I wanted to look at, hey, what are some alternatives in this, you know, likely new paradigm of, hey, Fivetran is going to try and, you know, jack up your prices and you're likely not going to have, um, you know, the same support from DBT for an open source product. What can you do? Um, and so that is where first I want to talk about an open source fork of DBT. So this is just a GitHub repo I found. Um, and really, while, you know, this is just one user that, that did this, you know, just fork DBT um, and, you know, has made kind of just an easy, uh, you know, dynamic extension of DBT source code. Um, obviously, you still have the option to go to uh, DBT right now and download open source DBT. But the issue is they're not going to be really supporting it or, you know, making any changes or future improvements on it, right? So this is really where, you know, whether it's this open DBT GitHub project or it's some other project, um, you're going to have to have some kind of, you know, or I think some people are gonna to need to step up and you know create their own open source forks of DBT to keep developing on kind of now a parallel uh, path 
to Fivetran where they're likely, you know, they're incentivized as a company that's, you know, trying to make money, right, to build more of those features into their core product and not, you know, build them into the open source offering. Um, so this is where you know, I think a lot of people are going to start moving to is, hey, you know, we need to fork this project and actually just customize it for our own needs um, in order to you know, keep using DBT and keep, you know, keep it up to date with the demands of a modern enterprise. If you don't want to go and buy it in, buy into the entire five train ecosystem uh, over there. So now another great option uh, for DBT uh, is Cosmos. Um, and so Cosmos is basically a way to use Airflow to just read in a DBT project directory um, and then render out an Airflow DAG that is essentially analogous to, you know, if you ran that same pipeline, that same project within DBT Cloud, very similar set of capabilities um, and honestly even, even more capabilities in some ways because, you know, with this, you're not only restricted to only using an Airflow DAG, but you can also use an Airflow task group which means you can then within a single pipeline have, hey, you know, my data ingestion, whatever downstream, you know, upstream processing, hey, I want to bring in some data, raw data, load it into a database and then trigger my DBT workflow. And then once my DBT workflow is done, maybe I then want to, you know, trigger a Power BI or a Tableau or a Sigma dashboard refresh um, that, you know, then takes in that new data and, you know, updates a report, right? Um, and so that's also where I think, you know, Fivetran is going to go with this acquisition of, hey, you know, they've been, you know, really trying to corner the market on that first part of, hey, bringing the data in from your different sources into the database. Now they're going to be trying to, you know, run the transformations within that database and capture that compute as well. Uh, but with their price model, I imagine it's going to be pretty extractive versus something like Airflow is a lot cheaper to run per operation, um, you know, you know, something like five train, hey, you're going to, you know, spend dollars, you know, per or tens of thousands of dollars for a connector, especially if it's something that's, you know, long tail, you want to connect to an on-prem database versus something like Airflow, you know, that same operational cost, you like 800 incremental dollars uh, over the course of a year just for the raw compute because Airflow isn't doing a lot of the work. It's just going and triggering operations in other locations. Um, and then that is allowing it to, you know, say, hey, we don't need to use a compute here. You're doing it in those other locations, pay for the compute there. Um, so it aligns really well to this kind of ELT, you know, modern cloud data pipeline where you use each system for what it's best at. Now, it's not all doom and gloom on, you know, the DBT paid side, right? If you're willing to pay that premium, they are starting to bake in, you know, a lot of cool AI powered features, this, you know, AI canvas, drag and drop kind of code developing uh, DBT projects, um, and they're also integrating an MCP server and you know developer agents for writing D DBT projects for you, as seems like everyone out there is these days. Um, so you know if you want more of a hey, I don't want to write code really at all, or I have team members who aren't super technically proficient. You know, got maybe the all-in approach of hey, we're going to go all in on the GUI is good for you. Uh, but but personally, and for you know a lot of data engineers that actually like the flexibility that code gives you, I think you know moving to other solutions like Airflow makes a lot of sense for a much more low cost um, and also high customize customizability option uh, and very flexible tool versus you know having going all in on five train and paying them tons and tons of money for the custom collectors or connectors they like to charge people for um, because that's really where you're going to get soaked is when you know hey it might be cheap to connect to snowflake and databricks but when you want to connect to that on-prem sql server that's where someone like five train is going to get you and that's where something like airflow really shows its shine um, is the ability to work best in both be just as well for both of those types of use cases um, so i hope you enjoyed this video just wanted to get a quick one out there to think, express my thoughts on the situation uh, but we have a great rest of your day data guy out